Have you ever had a stressful day and then you met up with a friend or loved one, you shared a hug, and then you instantly just felt better? Or perhaps you got a massage and it felt like all of that emotional tension just disappeared along with the physical tension. Or maybe you sat down with a friend for a cup of coffee or tea and their calming presence and validating words made those old troubles just seem a whole lot less important. If you've experienced any of these things, you've experienced what's called co-regulation. That's the power of other people to help us feel more emotionally calm and regulated. Now, regulation or calming can either be self-regulation, that's when you calm yourself down, or it can be co-regulation, that's where you're calming down the other person or they're calming down you, you're kind of doing it together. When children grow up in a secure functioning home, they receive this co-regulation from their caregivers. So they learn to regain this emotional composure. Now, why is it important to feel calm and safe anyway? So when we are seen, heard, and understood, we feel safe, and then this allows us to express and process our own emotions with others. In contrast, if someone's in an argument with a partner and their temperature rises or their heart starts pounding, they're experiencing a fight or flight response. When we don't feel safe, the body automatically takes steps to prepare to fight or to run away. So it's gonna pump blood to the extremities, increase the heart rate, increase the blood pressure. Some people go into a freeze state, kind of alternatively where they dissociate or they have trouble hearing or thinking clearly. And this might not sound too useful in a fight, but the free state is actually the body's way of preparing for physical harm, such as if someone was gonna be eaten by a lion, they wouldn't wanna feel anything. So as far as our nervous system is concerned, we are preparing for a potential life threat, even if it's actually just a conversation about the dishes. You've probably known people or been there yourself where they acted irrationally without thinking and they did things that they regretted. Daniel Goleman coined the term amygdala hijack to describe this process. What happens is normally when you perceive with your eyes and your ears, information goes up into the brain to the thalamus to be processed. It's kind of like a relay station. And then it goes on to the prefrontal cortex, which is the thinking brain, and then on to the amygdala, which is the emotional brain. However, if you perceive a threat, this information goes to both the thalamus and the amygdala, bypassing the prefrontal cortex. That's right, you don't think about it, you just act. And so that's sometimes what happens when people feel unsafe and then they do things without thinking that they later regret. And so once that threat has disappeared, it can take 20 minutes to an hour to recover from this surge of epinephrine and cortisol and other stress hormones. So you can imagine the effect that all of this kind of nervous system activity has and all the hormones surging around the body has on a conversation with your partner if one of you feels emotionally unsafe. So this naturally brings up the question of how do you co-regulate with a partner? How do you help other people to feel safe? How do you communicate safety in partnership? So here are some examples of language that communicate safety and trust. It's going to be okay. I love you, I'm not going anywhere. I'm here with you, we'll get through this together. I'll keep you safe. I'm so glad you're mine. I'm listening, I hear you. I want you to know that what you're saying is important to me and I want to work through this together. Can I tell you what I'm hearing you say? I want to make sure I understand. Take all the time you need. Now each attachment style will have its preferences. So an anxious style will prefer words like, I'm not going anywhere. Whereas an avoidance style will prefer words like, I want to make sure that I'm understanding you. While a disorganized style would like to hear something like you're safe and then feel that that is true. So it's also important to think about how we can build safety using nonverbal body language. You can communicate safety with touch. So you could put a hand on someone's arm. Uh, you can communicate it with a loving gaze. Patty Elledge calls this the beam gleam, where we're shooting beam gleams out of our eyes of I'm so happy to see you. I'm so glad you're here. 
you can communicate all of this care with your eyes, with your gaze. And it's helpful to face a partner while you're engaged in an important conversation because we don't want to miss out on signals that our partner might be giving out, which would communicate this to us that they're getting out of their comfort zone. So holding hands can feel reassuring to some people, a gentle touch on the arm, making soft, gentle eye contact, not staring, not glaring, and keeping a comfortable amount of eye contact and then looking away. That kind of thing can help reassure the nervous system, keeping your voice at a conversational level. So not super raised, not shrill, not booming. Sometimes for some people, it can be easy to get caught up uh, in emotion. When they're caught up in emotion, it's easy for them to raise their voice. And this can set off alarms in the other person's nervous system. So uh, keep your voice at a conversational volume and that will help to reassure your partner. So what do you need your partner to do in the moment to help you feel safe and secure? Put their arms around you and tell you that they love you or say that you're the only one and they won't leave or say they'll support you or would you want to be wrapped in a, a big protective hug? So talk to your partner, find out what you can do or say to make them feel safe in the moment and here are some questions that you can explore together. What are ways that we can help each other to emotionally engage in conversation? What do we each need to feel safe to express our emotions? What are some ways we can each help ourselves to calm down if we're starting to get stressed out in a conversation? What are some ways that we can each help each other to calm down? And what will help us to explore conflict areas together? So I hope you've enjoyed learning some ways to co-regulate together. If you want to share some ways that have helped you or other people to get calm in the conversation, to co-regulate, please comment below. If you want more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.